Over the last 24 hours, we have identified 1,265 new cases of COVID-19 in Alberta, and about 15,600 tests were completed yesterday. This means that our provincial positivity rate currently sits at about 8.1%, and we have 13,719 active cases. There are 355 people in hospital. Of those, 71 are in the ICU. Sadly, we have now reached 500 deaths from COVID-19 in this province. This is a tragic milestone. My sympathies go out to the loved ones and friends of these individuals who are mourning the lives lost during what is a very difficult time to grieve. But we must do all we can to protect the patients in all of our care, which is why Alberta Health Services has been taking and continues to take steps to increase capacity in the system. In the coming weeks, they plan to make available more than 2,000 acute care beds and up to 400 ICU beds to be allocated for patients with COVID-19 across the province if they are needed. In some cases, these will be new beds. In other cases, these beds are existing hospital spaces that will be made available as patients are moved into continuing care beds in the community. To make this space available, AHS will be taking a variety of steps. This includes transferring patients out of acute care to continuing care wherever possible and safe, moving patients to available beds that are open in other parts of the province, repurposing other clinical areas to provide ICU care, and if needed, reducing additional non-urgent surgeries. These steps are being taken to make sure that there is sufficient capacity to meet the growing health care need. In order to allocate these acute and ICU beds, AHS will also be working with Alberta Health, continuing care operators and other partners to open additional continuing care beds in the community. AHS will provide more specific information on changes as they are implemented in the days ahead. Effective today, AHS is also changing visitor access to acute care sites that are on outbreak or in communities that are under enhanced status. For patients admitted to hospital and in ambulatory care, including emergency departments, only one designated family or support person is permitted under specific circumstances. For maternity and postpartum units, one designated family or support person will be permitted. A doula or surrogate may also be permitted. For pediatrics and NICU, as well as critical care, up to two designated family or support persons are permitted. In end-of-life situations, one designated family or support person is permitted, and the presence of any other visitors must be prearranged with the site or unit. The extent of restrictions may vary site to site due to patient circumstances, operational considerations, and the ability to maintain physical distancing. I know that the new measures will be difficult for many, but our health care system is at a tipping point, and we cannot allow it to go over the edge. We need Albertans to do their part. We need Albertans to follow every measure, and I mean every measure. Just as we all need to work together to be successful, the restrictions in place are only successful if they all work together. Please do not ignore the measures that may seem inconvenient for you. Picking and choosing which measures we want to follow or find easiest will not help us slow the spread of COVID-19 cases. I know that after months of public health measures, we continue to crave more social contact. This makes gathering restrictions even more challenging for many. I also understand many have concerns about being asked to not have other people in their home. But now more than ever, only those who live with you should be in your home. Evidence from what we've seen in the spread that we've had over the past eight months, and to make sure that we're, again, communicating to the public the importance of those basic measures, no matter what we're seeing in contact tracing, the basic measures will remain critical, which is if you are feeling ill at all, stay home, get tested, stay away from the rest of the members of your household if you're feeling ill, wear a mask even while you're indoors, while you're at home if you're feeling ill, to prevent or limit that possibility that you could infect others in your household. 
Make sure that uh, you're staying distance from others when you're out, wearing a mask when in indoor public spaces where you're around others outside your household. And making sure, again, regular hand hygiene, keeping hands away from your face. All of those basic measures remain true, whether or not uh, the, the epidemiology about the locations of spread uh, is available. We, we do know those basics, and those basics never change. But the measures announced yesterday will only work if they are applied as broadly as possible. As I said, I know that these measures will be difficult for many. And I know that there is a lot of debate around whether they go too far or not far enough. The best thing that any of us can do is to be as vigilant as possible in our own lives. Regardless of where you live, please do everything possible to limit your contacts with those outside your household. The challenge of COVID is that none of us can bear all of these burdens alone. And yet, the usual ways that we have used all our lives to support each other like gatherings, giving hugs, or going out for coffee with a group of friends, are exactly the kinds of activities that can spread COVID quickly. We all need support, and we can support each other in different ways for now. Telephone calls, letters, texts, and outdoor visits are all great options. We all need to bring back the family Zoom calls and the virtual dates that were part of our lives in the spring. The more we do that, and the more that each of us goes the extra mile, the more effective we will be in reducing the spread during the next few weeks. We are in this together, and we will get through this together.